Hey everybody, I just recently bought a new propane furnace that I'm very excited about and it's much larger than my old furnace and I wanted to show it off to you guys by melting some aluminum in it today. And I've already run it a few times just to make sure that it works and it is certainly capable of melting aluminum and even copper so far. I'm sure it can go higher but that's all I've done uh, up till now. So this was a kit that I bought on Amazon for a pretty reasonable price really for what you get and everything that you see there comes in the kit except for the big fire bricks that stuff is sitting on. So it comes with the main furnace which is in the back. There's a burner attachment that goes on it, a long tube that connects to your propane tank and a propane regulator as well. And it came with a large uh, clay graphite crucible as well as some tongs. So besides the actual tank of propane, I mean that's everything you need to get going. So it's a very nice kit. You see down inside the furnace here, it's a steel body with uh, kale wool insulation interior, that's the white stuff. And at the bottom there, it came with a real small little fire brick to put the crucible on. So this is what I've been using so far as my mold. It's a mini loaf pan that I bought from Walmart or something a while back. And you can see the top left cell is what I've been using the most because it's all burned out. <laughs> but I've used that to produce this really awesome loaf of aluminum. And this represents something like 75 soda cans, I believe. So this is a, a nice little brick of aluminum. A lot of fun to, to do that melt. Um, so I'm going to try to do something similar today. And then I said I did copper as well. So this is the, the little bit of copper I did as a test. So not nearly as much as the aluminum, of course. But interestingly, it's, it's almost as heavy. <laughs> so it shows you the, the huge density difference between these two. So. The problem with the uh, loaf mold here is it makes you know really awesome ingots, which I love because they're they're hefty and you can really hold them. But um, you know they don't fit very well in that big crucible back there. So a lot of people that do these melting videos they use muffin tins. So I bought one of those and we're gonna give that a shot. The problem with this muffin tin though is you notice that the furnace has a hole in the top of it for the uh, escaping gases to exit. And the benefit of having smaller ingots to use is that you can just drop them straight in that hole uh, so that they fall into the crucible and you don't have to open up the top. The problem with this muffin tin is that the muffins are slightly bigger than the default hole on this thing. So that's not quite gonna work. I mean, I guess I'll just have to not fill these up to the brim. But even if they don't quite fit through the top hole, they'll still be smaller and easier to put into the crucible here. So I should be able to fit more aluminum in the crucible at any one time, which is still a benefit. So the thing with using these types of pans as molds is that obviously they're not meant for this sort of thing. They're meant for making food. So they have a nonstick coating of Teflon on them. Um, so if we just poured molten metal directly into that, uh, the Teflon would probably catch fire and, and uh, you know, turn into a gas and bubble a little bit. And there's the potential that that could throw molten metal around, which is not good. So we need to burn off that uh, nonstick coating first of all before we use this stuff. Obviously do this outside because these fumes are no good. Before we get started, I just wanted to do a comparison. So this is my new furnace, and then here is my old furnace. <laughs> in fact, I could almost fit my entire old furnace into the crucible for the new one. <laughs> and then finally, here's what we'll actually be melting. This big old bag of soda cans that I've been collecting. Yeah, I drink a lot of soda. I doubt I'll be able to get the whole bag in there, but we'll see how many we can melt. All right, everything's ready, so let's fire her up. Wow. 
there's a little valve uh, down here by the burner that you can open up and that uh, allows more oxygen in. That makes the fire hotter. Now to start off, I have a little bit of aluminum left over from a previous melt. We're going to throw that into the crucible to give it uh, a sort of a starting point. safety gear I've got on. We got a welding jacket, welding gloves, face shield, and for those of you who have seen my other aluminum video, shoes. Alright it hasn't been hasn't been more than a couple of minutes really and the inside's already red hot and the initial aluminum is melted so time to start popping in some cans.
So while these things are still hot, I thought it might be a good opportunity to demonstrate the Leiden frost effect. So I've got a little bit of water here I'm going to drip on top of it. Oh, sweet. You see the little droplet in the middle? That's exactly what I was hoping would happen. Aluminum shrinks as it cools down, so what it happens is it kind of collapses in the middle a little bit, so you get kind of a depression, and that's what this water is uh, sitting on top of. That's really cool. The Leiden frost effect, by the way, is when you have a liquid dripped on a very hot surface. What happens is it makes it evaporates immediately, and it makes a little cushion of gas underneath the liquid droplet that sort of protects it from further evaporation. So you get this little droplet that's sort of uh, hovering around on a cushion of water vapor, and that slows down the evaporation, so it doesn't just you know immediately puff into steam. So let's demold these while they're still hot, and I'm going to use my old mold as a uh, source of water so we can cool them off real quick. Perfect. That's another example of a Leiden frost effect, by the way. Now we've got a hot object going into cold liquid, and you see it didn't boil instantly. It uh, kind of fizzled for a bit because we had that same cushion of gas surrounding the aluminum ingot. So that kind of slowed down the boiling. And then once that gas bubble collapsed, when the aluminum cooled down enough, then we got proper boiling of the water. Oh, that one was perfect. That was a perfect example of Leiden Frost. Awesome. <laughs> now you see that we put three of these ingots in there. That's heated the water up sufficiently to actually be boiling water now. See, there's actually a good amount of aluminum still left over in the crucible here. So either I didn't heat it up enough and it just wasn't at the right pouring temperature, so a lot of it froze in the crucible, or maybe there was something in the aluminum cans that sort of interfered with it. You know, I noticed uh, when I was about to pour, there was like a film that had formed over the surface that looked white. I mean, I'm not really sure what color it was because the whole thing was, you know, red, but um, that might have been the aluminum freezing or it could have been something from the cans that uh, was still as an impurity in the aluminum. So not 100% successful pour, but eh, that's not too bad. So now that everything's cooled, let's see how much we got. I've got three ingots here, one big muffin and two half muffins. Comes to 403.74 grams. So let's compare that to the weight of a single soda can, sans tab, is 12.65. So if we do some quick phone math with that, that is 31.91 cans worth. So 32 cans uh, worth of aluminum is what's represented here. Now we started with 50 cans, so that's, I lost quite a few to um, oxidation 
and you know some of the plastic liner in there i don't know how much that contributes to the weight so that of course burned off so we did lose quite a bit so cans are not a fantastic source of aluminum so besides burning off the plastic liner and oxidation of the aluminum there's a couple other sources of loss here too that are fairly significant so when i was scraping off the dross from on top of the aluminum which is all this stuff uh, it's real hard to get that without getting a bunch of aluminum in there so i mean that's there's a bunch mixed in so i definitely lost a bit there <laughs> there's some of the, the lettering from the cans that's pretty funny so yeah there's definitely lots of aluminum left over in these these things um, I got some on my spoon, which hasn't come off, and then of course this big chunk uh, was left over in the bottom of the crucible. So this is actually fairly sizable. And you know, you remember I, I also added in that chunk to start with, so this may actually be a lot of that, you know, because it looks like the bottom is, is very oxidized. So that may, that may have been left over from the old, the, the original thing that I put in there. Um, and there's, there's quite a bit of aluminum stuck to the bottom of this and i don't know if that's because i didn't get it hot enough you know maybe it froze as i was trying to pour it so it's just a little strange but if anybody has any suggestions on you know ways to improve my method uh, i would definitely appreciate it hear from me in the comments but other than that that's about it i i definitely recommend this furnace if anybody wants to buy it i'll put a link in the description i thought it was a pretty reasonable price for everything that you got and it seems to work great for aluminum and and copper Anyways, this is going to be a very fun piece of equipment for me. I'm looking forward to using it some more. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks a lot for watching.